I love going in every once in a while and checking out the award sites of the day. You can find all kinds of cool ideas for your own projects or clients, or for me, videos like this one. I recently came across this website right here, maybe a couple of weeks ago. It's the National Student Show. I think the website is nationalstudentshow.com. And they pulled off this really cool kind of like early or late 90s, early 2000s text slinky effect, which I thought was really cool. I spent a little bit of time and kind of made my own version of this. It's a little bit trippier, a little bit more springy, but I think it's pretty cool. So I just wanted to make this video today to show you guys how I pulled this off and how you could make a similar effect yourself. To go ahead and just jump right into breaking down how all of this works, I've gone ahead and bootstrapped a project here with a basic index.html file, which has some stuff in it. I'll show you that in a second. A script.js file that is just completely empty. And then a styles.css file that has a little bit of stuff in here. We can go over that in a second, but it's pretty much just a reset. Over here on our HTML file, I've just gone ahead and linked our CSS file here and our script, making sure to defer our JS script here so that that loads after our HTML loads. And then inside of the actual HTML itself, I just have this div, which I've given an ID of wrapper. This is gonna be kind of the wrapper that the whole effect takes place in. And then I have 15 of these span tags that each have the same text in them. So this top one is gonna be like our main text and each of these ones below it will be those kind of like outline text that make up the different parts of the spring. Every single one of these is gonna have this class that I just called text just for the basic styling. Then all of them, but the first one will have this outline text class that's just gonna add some extra styles to make it be that kind of outline text, which makes sense. And then this first one I've added this base anim class two, um, you don't necessarily need to add this. I'm just gonna do this so that you can kind of see one thing animate before we add the same class to all of these. Over on our CSS, we just have some basic stuff to start here. I'm just importing a font from Google Fonts. This is Poppins. I have a whole bunch of different font weights here. You probably don't need that. In our root tag here, I'm just setting a font size, a base font size that we can use rem and base that off of 10 pixels. And then I have a couple of CSS variables here we'll use in a few spots. I'm just doing like kind of a monochrome white black thing, but you can do this with whatever colors you want, obviously. I'm doing a basic little reset thing here, just setting everything to box sizing border box, removing any margin and giving the pop-ins font to the font family for all of our elements. And then on our body, just setting that background color of black and a color of white for everything. You'll see, obviously, this looks pretty ridiculous right now. We just have this black background and some text that says, whoa, over and over again. We can scroll down a little bit here and start adding some of these styles. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and pick out that wrapper ID. If we go back over to our index.html, this is just the div that wraps everything. And I'm gonna set that to the size of the screen. So we'll just say width 100%, height 100 viewport height. I'm also gonna add in a position of relative because I'm gonna be setting this text to position absolute. And I wanna make sure that it's relative to this wrapper. And then I'm also gonna set an overflow of hidden so that anytime our text goes off the screen, we don't get any kind of weird scroll bars. Next, we'll go ahead and add some styling to our base text selector here. If you remember, that is the text that is on each one of our span tags or the class rather. First, we'll add some basic styling for the text itself. So we'll give it a font size of 24 rem, font weight, bold, color. I'm resetting this. I guess I don't technically need to do that. I'm giving this a user select of none uh, just to make sure that if anyone tries to double click on the text, you don't get some weird big blob of highlighted text in the middle of the screen. And then a text transform of uppercase. I'm doing everything technically written in uppercase here, but just to kind of round off any corners. Saving that should give you something that looks like this, super fancy. After this, we'll go ahead and set a position of absolute for all of these and center it in the screen using top 50%, left 50%. That'll actually technically give you the top left corner of the text in the middle of the screen. We can fix that centering problem using transform translate by doing just minus 50%, minus 50%. And that should actually give you some centered text. Now I also want to kind of skew this a little bit and translate it because I don't want this to start right in the middle of the screen. I want it to kind of start at a little bit of a slant. And I also want it to kind of be moving up and down, kind of start down a little bit and then move all over the screen. So I'm gonna add a couple of more things here. The first one's gonna be a translate Y here. I'm doing 50 pixels. We can mess with this later to kind of change how the effect works. And then I'm also gonna rotate this minus 15 degrees. And now we should have something that looks like this. So it really looks like we just have this one piece of text here kind of tilted in the middle of the screen, but technically we have all 15 of our tags here. And notice that I can't select it. So that's that user select thing here. I wanna start animating this. So I'm gonna go ahead and define a keyframes animation. I'm gonna call it just up down because it's gonna be the kind of translating one. We'll just use 0% to 50% and we'll set a transform of translate. We're gonna have to do it twice 
likes the way that we're doing it now. So for 0%, we're gonna say translate 50%, 50%, and then translate Y to minus 50 pixels. So this is matching our translate Y up here because that's our starting position. And then we wanna translate that to 50 pixels in the other direction. So just positive 50 pixels. And then we'll use that by calling the base anim selector. This is already on our first span tag here, base anim. We'll add it to these other ones as well in a minute using JavaScript. And inside of that, we'll call animation, give it the name, two and a half seconds, however long you wanna do, play with that if you want. An easing function, we want this to run infinitely and we want it to alternate in both directions so it doesn't kind of just snap back awkwardly in place. And if I save that, we should now get this one piece of text kind of moving up and down like this, which looks interesting, but not exactly what we're looking for yet. I'm gonna add a second animation to this and I'm gonna call that rotate. This animation is gonna start at minus 15 degrees and animate to 15 degrees. And we can add this animation along with our other animation. So I can just right after this, go ahead and add a comma like this and paste in our second animation and give that kind of similar parameters. I'm saying five seconds for rotate in this case. And now we'll see that we have this text kind of going up and down and also rotating. So we're starting to get a little bit closer to this kind of trippy effect that we're going for. The one last basic kind of styling effect that we're gonna need here is to take these kind of text elements in the back and make them outlined as opposed to being solid. I already have these class names on them called outline text. So I'll go back over to my CSS and I'll select that outline text like this. I'll set the color to transparent and I'll use the WebKit text stroke selector to set a stroke for this. You should now see that we have an outlined text element like this. And this actually does have pretty good browser support. You can double check it if you want, but it actually should work on even things like Firefox. Now this should be just about everything that we need for the CSS styling itself. We can move over to our JavaScript file here though to start adding the rest of our animation. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a selector for all of our text elements. So document.querySelector all and just passing that dot text. Remember this doc text is on every single one of our span tags. I'll define a variable called delay and I'm gonna set this to zero. Essentially what we're going to do is add a different delay along with that base animation to each one of our elements that are in the back. So they all have different animation delays. I'll map over our text here using all text out for each and I'm gonna pull out both the element and the index. We'll set a delay for this using animation delay and setting it to our current delay in seconds. We wanna set a Z index for this as well so that they're stacking correctly. The one problem that we have is is because this is kind of top to bottom, we don't actually want to set Z index kind of from top to bottom. So like one, two, three, four, or five. We actually wanna start this way. So we wanna do like one, two, three, four, five. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna take the length of our list of text elements and then minus the current index. So at first this will be 15 minus zero essentially and kind of work its way down. After that, we'll make sure we add our base anim class here so that we're actually applying the animation to each one of these. And finally, we'll just increment our delay by some amount. So I'm saying 0.15 seconds. If we save that, we should now get our animation here. So each one of our elements is following this front one, kind of making it look like it's almost swimming. You can adjust this here. So I could say 0.05 and you'll get kind of a tighter spring looks almost more like it's just 3D text, which is actually a little bit closer to what the reference is doing. You'll see this is kind of a little bit tighter of an animation, but I personally think it looks a little bit cooler if you keep it kind of loose like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. Now the final and probably most challenging piece of this that we need to do to wrap this up is to make this follow our mouse in some way. You can do this in a couple of different ways. So if you look at the original version, it's kind of following on the up down and then following a little bit on the left right, but really it's just rotating on the left right. That looks pretty cool. The way that I've decided to do this is just to have it follow in both directions and rotate on its own. And you'll notice it also doesn't just snap directly to the center of my mouse. It kind of lags behind and it doesn't go all the way to my mouse. It kind of just moves within some range that I've defined. The way that I've done this, I'm just gonna show with a couple of boxes here. So you can imagine that this is kind of like your full screen. And if your screen was this full size like this and you said you wanted to move your mouse all the way over here and follow it all the way over there, that would be one thing. But what I wanna do is I wanna define kind of a percentage. So I'm gonna go back to say something like this. And you can imagine our text is in the middle here. And I wanna move in proportion to this center box our text based on where our mouse is on the screen. So if our mouse is all the way over here to the right, I want the text to be kind of at the right side of this box. If it's right in the center, I want the text to be right in the center. And if it's all the way in the left, I want the text to be right at the left side of this box. Same with the Y axis as well. So all the way at the bottom, I want the text to be kind of at the bottom. All the way at the top, I want the text to be right at the top of this box and then centered 
vice versa, you get the idea. To get to work on this, the first thing that I'm gonna do is select our wrapper class. Remember that our wrapper class here is the ID that wraps all of our span tags. On our wrapper class, I'll add an event listener on mouse move. I'll make sure that I'm pulling out the event. I'm just calling it E here. And then we're gonna do all of our fun stuff in here. The first thing that I've done is I'm taking the inner width and the inner height of the screen off of the window because this div is the size of the window. And then I'll also pull the mouse's current position using event.clientx and event.clienty. Now is where we get to do some math. Super, super fun, but it should be pretty straightforward. There's nothing super complicated here. The first thing that I'm gonna do is get the actual percentage of the way on the x-axis that the mouse is on the screen. I'll do this using client x over inner width. So essentially what this is gonna say is if my mouse is all the way on the right side of the screen, it's gonna give me a one or 100%. And it's all the way on the left, it's gonna say zero or zero percent. Next, I'm gonna define a range. So this is kind of like defining the size of this inner box, like how big we want this to be. I want mine to be 15% on the x-axis of the entire size of the screen. So I'll do inner width times 0.15. And that's actually not saying 15% of the size of the whole screen, it's saying 15% on either direction from the center of the screen. So technically 30% of the screen. Next, I'll define our minimum value. So this is the minimum value from the left side of the screen in pixels. We're saying inner width of the screen divided by two minus this max range. Don't worry, I'll actually log these values out in a second to make this a little bit clearer. After that, I'll do the same for max. So it's the exact same thing, just plus max range X. We'll find the difference between those values using just max X minus min X. And then we'll get the actual pixel offset essentially from the left side of the screen by saying diff X times percent X. So what this is, is the amount of pixels from the left side of kind of like this box to where the actual element's gonna be. From that, we can actually define our left so how far left we wanna be on the screen by doing min x plus that pixel offset. We can actually map some of these values out here so you can see what they look like. I'll just do an old console log, add some commas, pop back over here, and we'll move our screen around a little bit here and we can see what this looks like. So I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, open one of these guys up, and we can actually see what these values are. I'll go all the way to the right side of the screen, scroll down and see what that looks like. And from kind of top to bottom, we'll say percent %x. So this is very close to one, right? 0.99, because we're all the way at the right side of the screen. Our maximum range is gonna be 145 pixels. The minimum x is gonna be 340 pixels. So that's like 340 pixels from the left side of the screen. Max X is gonna be 631 pixels. So that's 631 pixels from the left side of the screen again. Our diff X here is gonna be 291 pixels, resulting in our pixel offset being 288 pixels. And the amount left that we wanna go is going to be 629 pixels. I'll close that up, remove the log, and we can actually do the exact same thing on the Y axis. So percent Y, gonna be client Y over inner height. The max range I wanna be for this to be 10% in either direction. So we're gonna say inner height times 0.1. Minimum Y will define pretty much the same way as we did with X. Same with max Y. Difference will be calculated the exact same way. Same with pixel offset. And finally, we can get our top variable after that like this. <clears throat> now we actually wanna apply these anytime we move the mouse. So I'll go ahead and map over each of our text. We've already selected all of our text up here at the top. So no need to pull that out again. I'm pulling out both the element and the index. We'll see why in just a moment. And to actually make this animate, all we have to do is call element.animate like this. Inside of this, we can pass in some options. It's gonna be an object. And we'll use these values that we've calculated to say, hey, we wanna move top by top pixels and left by left number of pixels. We can define exactly how we want this to react with a second object like this. I want mine to take one second and I'll set fill to forwards. If I save this, we should now see that this kind of follows us, but it's a little bit janky. And the reason that it's a little bit janky is we don't have any delay in movement between each one of our elements. So all of them move at the exact same speed. To fix this, all that I'm gonna do is add a delay here and I'm gonna do that by doing our current index times some value. So for our first element, it'll be zero times 50 or zero milliseconds of offset. And then for each subsequent item, it'll be 50 milliseconds more in delay. And if I save that, we should now be able to move the screen and see that each of our items is delayed by an even amount, giving us a super trippy kind of like spring-like effect. To wrap it all up, we can add a little bit more fancy HTML in here, some CSS to style that up, and now you've got yourself an awards-worthy landing page. Hope you guys learned something on this one. You can use the same kind of techniques that we've used for this to make all kinds of super cool animations. I'll have a link to all of this source code as well as the original inspiration in the bio below or in the description below. If this was useful, like and subscribe, always massively appreciated. And I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this one. I will see you guys next time.